when I was studying for this message, I was asking God, how is it that we started off made in your image, but then we ended up, on the spirit level, we're made in your image, but then we ended up having to navigate the spirit of fear, the spirit of lust, the spirit of depression. Spirits, I'm not talking about fleeting emotions. Fear is an emotion until it becomes a spirit. Oh, God, help me. Okay. Oh. The serpent distorts our image of God, and it opens up our spirit. It cracks our spirit, and the enemy exploits the cracks in our spirit. If you've ever had something happen in your life that made you question God or question what God can do to you or through you or for you, then you did not just arrive to that place on your own. You arrived to that place as a result of the enemy distorting your image of God. And sometimes our distortion happens through family circles. Sometimes that distortion happens when we come into church and we leave with church hurt because we come into it thinking that we can have an open spirit. And then when we recognize that the spirit that we had that was open has actually resulted in us experiencing a wound, now we have a broken spirit. The reason why I took the time to separate the emotion of fear and the emotions of anxiety versus a, versus a spirit is because you can have an emotion without an emotion changing what you believe. When God disrupted my message this morning and none of it made sense or allowed the enemy to do it and he's going to use it for good, I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see in about 20 minutes. I had to get to a place where I said, even though I have fear and I have nerves and I have anxiety right now, I still believe that the Spirit of God has sent me into this room. And so there are some moments where I have to trust the Spirit because my emotions could invade my spirit and now I have a spirit of fear instead of letting the fear just pass on by me. Sometimes you got to stand in the truth and the weight of the spirit regardless of what you feel because if I let my feelings take over and drive me then I'm now being governed by the, my fear. I'm governed by my emotions instead of being governed by the spirit and I am all for therapy. I have a therapist. You do have to work through your feelings and your emotions but you have to make sure that what was supposed to be a feeling does not become the place where you reside or you will have a spirit of shame. You'll have a spirit of lust. You'll have a spirit of pornography. There are spirits out here. And if your spirit is open, the image that you're supposed to reflect will be distorted. For God is not giving you the spirit of fear. Why does Paul tell Timothy this? Because he's about to transition into a space of leadership. And Timothy is nervous and timid, and it, when what should have just been a feeling and emotion has the potential to actually become his spirit. But Paul reminds him that God did not give you the spirit of fear, but he gave you the spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And sometimes you got to rebuke those spirits that are trying to get into the cracks of the image that you have been created in. I know it's a little old school, and I know we don't always rebuke things the way that we should. But when a devil starts rolling up on you, if you give him space instead of rebuking him, you will allow the power of God to be diluted. But there is something to be said about somebody who doesn't mind saying, Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you. You cannot have my house. You cannot have my family. I'm going to the therapist because depression shall not be my portion. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus because you don't have to just just rebuke you can start getting active with that thing too not only do I rebuke you but faith without works is dead I've got faith that when I rebuke you I put you under my feet so I'm going to start moving like the rebuking has positioned me to have my steps ordered again get out of my spirit I tell you to yell yell it get out of my spirit get out of my spirit get out of my spirit fear you gotta go get out of my spirit anxiety you gotta go get out of my spirit lust you gotta go get out of my spirit shame you gotta go get out of my spirit if I was doing it in my own power I'd have a 
a problem, but I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I serve you notice in the name of Jesus. Out of my spirit, out of my spirit. I may have been cracked, but it won't be the end. I may have been wounded, but it won't be the end. He makes all things new. I wish a devil would try and get through the crack when I get finished. Being in the presence of God, wherever there was a crack, his presence is going to fill. Somebody's getting ready to get their spirit back. Somebody's getting ready to get their reflection back. Somebody's going to leave this place looking like the image of God that you were created to be. Something. God in your spirit. Oh. Intruder alert, intruder alert. I got what's wrong with you. You've been trying to figure out what's wrong with you. I hear God saying there's an intruder in your spirit. It started off heartbreak, but now you don't know what your life is worth anymore. That's because what should have just been a heartbreak has become the state that you live in. Intruder, intruder, intruder. There's an intruder in your spirit. There's an intruder, that's why you can't sleep at night. There's an intruder in your spirit. That's why you don't know what to do with your life anymore. There's an intruder in your spirit. That's why suicidal ideation is taking over. There's an intruder in your spirit. Oh God. But you can't stay here. You can't stay here. You got to come into agreement about what your spirit is supposed to look like. Because when you know what your spirit is supposed to look like, you will not settle for anything less than what your spirit is supposed to look like. I don't wanna forgive you, but I gotta forgive you. Cause I know what my spirit is supposed to look like. I'm mad at you, but I can't be mad any longer. Cause I gotta maintain what my spirit is supposed to look like. I can't be who I'm supposed to be in the earth without the right spirit. It's in your spirit. It's in your spirit. The power and the problem. Living in the same spirit. So the mirror, you can't even see yourself anymore. You had these visions, you had these hopes, you wanted to break generational curses, you wanted to write a book that would help someone who had gone through what you'd been through, you wanted to introduce wholeness into your family, you wanted to take care of your body, but we can't just keep taking blow after blow after blow until it starts to affect our spirit and you'll know that it broke your spirit when it changes what you believe. I can't believe on that level no more because my spirit got broken. Oh, it wasn't just a heartbreak, it changed what I believe. It wasn't just grief, it changed what I believe. It's not just a disease, it changed what I believe. I'm not just going through with the kid now. I don't believe that I'm the right parent for the job. I'm questioning myself. This thing broke my spirit. Oh God. God. God says to Sarah, you're going to bear a child in your old age. And she laughs because I can't even believe on that level. Because being barren for so long has made it impossible for me to believe that I can produce after this much emptiness. So much so that God can send a word for you and you reject the very word God sends for you because you don't see yourself the way God sees you. Hey. 
Have you ever had God send a word for you? That if you're honest, you don't have the spirit to match. Come on, man. If we were to be honest, and we got to be honest. Because that's the only way we really experience transformation. This isn't just playing church. We got to be real about this thing. I don't know if I have the spirit for where you've called me. Because I already feel lonely. And I already feel afraid. And it looks like if I continue going down this journey, that there's only more loneliness, more betrayal, more isolation. And I don't think I'm strong enough to be who you've called me to be. But you, you keep calling me to be it anyway. I wish one of us could just give up. But he's too faithful to give up. So you got to grow up. You have to grow up. You're going to have to grow into the person who can be who God says you can be. And I don't mean growing by pretending. I mean growing by in the spirit realm. You say, God, I don't have the spirit for it, but I heard that if you dwell inside of me, that you can increase the capacity of my spirit. So God, when I say fill me up to I overflow, I mean let me overflow until I have enough capacity for the overflow. And then let me grow some more so I have capacity for that overflow. When Jesus calls the disciples, he says to the disciples, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Oh God. I almost called this message made for this. There's so much, I was so, I was just in my own world in this text. I thought maybe this is the text. Maybe I need to leave with this one because there was so much about this. When I hear follow me and I will make you fishers of men, for some reason I've always heard that as a question. Like he gave them an option. But it was a command. He commanded them to move in a lane that they were unfamiliar with. And when he commanded them to move into that lane, he doesn't say, follow me and you will be a fisher of men. He says, follow me and I will make you. I'm going to make you into what I'm calling you for. I'm going to make you into, you're not, you're right, you're not there. You're right, you may not have the spirit for it. You're right, you may not have the technique, you may not have the skills. But when I get finished making you, you'll be everything that you need to be. When I get finished making you, you're going to know how to cast out the devils. When I get finished making you, you're going to know how to balance the books. When I get finished, you got to make a marriage. We get married, but then you got to build a marriage. You don't just raise kids, you got to make these children. You don't just start the business, you got to make a business and guess what when God makes you into something sometimes he uses failure to make you the disciples he told them to cast out a devil it wouldn't come out he said, why couldn't it come out? He says, this time kind only comes out by fasting and praying. And it seemed like they failed, but in reality, he was making them by allowing them to fail. Is it failure? Or are they the tools that God is using to make you into who God has called you to be? And if you give up when you fail, then you'll never be made into who God has called you to be. So you got to have enough humility to stay in the making, even when it looks like you're failing to stay in the making, even when it means you got to apologize, you got to stay in the making, even when it feels like I don't know what I'm doing, I got to stay in the making because he called me to this. And I believe that he's calling me to make me, not to make me look good, not to build my ego, not to make other people jealous of me. You see, you can't have the culture of the world and the culture of 
of the kingdom when God is making you into something because you want to be made into an ego. You want to be made into an idol and God's trying to make you into a disciple and when God makes you into a disciple, you got to humble yourself and you got to be willing to look a little crazy and you got to be willing to look like you don't have it all together and you got to be willing to look like your kids are crazy and how could I be saving everyone else and my kids aren't together? You got to be willing to look like a fool because he uses the foolish things of the world so you can look good or you can mess around and get foolish with this thing and allow that failure to make you into a better husband into a better parent give me the spirit the spirit for this thing